All right, in this final Excel forecasting video, we'll try to address the shortcomings of our exponential smoothing model by adding a trend component. And the method we'll use is called Holtz method, but it's also referred to as double exponential smoothing. So here we can see our previous work on the exponential smoothing model. And just so that we can come back and compare this visually, we'll, we'll keep this chart around. We'll just make, um, some updates here, update the chart title, exponential smoothing. And I'm just going to create a new worksheet that we can put this on. So let's go back here and I'm just going to basically cut and paste this chart into our new charts worksheet so we can come back and visit this. And what we can do here is we won't, we won't make another adjustment in, in this area or yeah, we can do it. We'll do it on the same sheet. We don't want to make any adjustments here. We want to keep this around. So again, that we can have a, a comparison, um, but we do want to basically keep most of what we have here intact. So I'm just going to again, copy all the cells that are included in this exponential smoothing model. And we can go ahead here and paste them over to the right to set up our Holtz method model. So what we need to do in this case is basically it relies on what we already have in terms of exponential smoothing. We're just going to be adding to that a trend component. So the first step is to add a new column that we can use to keep track of our trending value. And then we're going to use a second parameter, a beta uh, parameter that we can use to help us again, determine how much of a trend we'd like to inject into the model. So let's just insert a new column and we're going to call this one T at time period T for our trend. The first thing we'll do is we'll add a parameter for our trend estimation. So beta, and we can start off with something um, somewhat significant. Let's try 0.5. And again, this will be an input, so I'll format it as such. And now what we need to do is include our calculations for the, the trend itself. So the trend is basically going to be um, based on, again, values that we have in our observations. But instead of basing them on the observations directly, we'll base the trend on the difference between our current and the previous smooth values that we've calculated using our exponential smoothing uh, method. So the values in the S column will be utilized along with our best effort guess as to what the trend might be to create uh, a new trend value. And then the forecast will be updated from what it currently is, which is just relying on the smooth value to be a combination of both the smooth value and our best effort determination for what the trend value is. So we're basically going to update our forecast so that it's based on not only the, the smooth value, but the smooth value plus whatever we see as a, a trend in the underlying model. To start, we'll set our first uh, trend value at zero uh, as a base, and then we'll in increase uh, so we implement the formula for our trends going forward because now we have a, a previous trend value that we can include in the formula. And then again, using a fill handle, we can just pull that calculation down through the remaining cells. So the formula here for calculating our, ten, our trend story is going to be our, our beta value that we've input up here. And again, because we're going to be using that beta cell in, in the formulas dragged all the way down through these rows, we want to make sure you have the absolute reference dollar signs included in there. So we're going to take our beta value and we're going to multiply that onto the difference between our, our current smooth value, subtract the previous smooth value. So it's the difference between those smooth values that we're going to use multiplied by our, our trend weight. So that's the first part of this formula. And then we're, we're going to add to that the difference so one subtract our, our beta value. So it's very similar to what we did to, to calculate the smooth value, hence the double exponential smoothing 
uh, moniker that's applied to this model. So we, we take one, subtract the difference, and then we want this value to be multiplied by the, the previous trend. So in this case, it'll be our cell AB5. And so that's going to be the calculation that we want to use for our trend values. Oh, and I've got an issue in here somewhere. Ah, I put my dollar signs in the wrong place. Getting into the double character <laughs> columns just kind of confused me. So let's make that correction. So it's AF dollar sign two, and the same here in this second reference, AF dollar sign two. And now we can update our smooth value so that it includes the trend as well. So we'll begin that here in the second smooth value um, cell, and we want to update this formula. So it's going to be similar um, to what we had before. We want to include um, our alpha value. So in this case, let's make the update here. So it'll be alpha times our current observ observed value. And so this is a copy paste. So we still have the hard reference in here. So I want to update this to be the current alpha, which is here. And then again, let's maybe I'll work here. Let's update the absolute cell references. So it's our alpha value multiplied by this current observed value. So that's fine. And then here, what we're going to add to that is again, still one minus, uh, we'll update its AD. So our alpha value, so the difference, so alpha multiplied by the current and then the one subtract alpha. And then here we're just multiplying it again onto uh, the previous smooth value, but we need to update this so that it also includes the trend. So we can wrap this in parentheses and include uh, again, it's difficult to click because the formula box is filling the space. So that's going to be A, B, and row 5. And so now that we have our, our updated smooth value calculation and we have our trend, we can just take these two and drag these with a fill handle on down and then format for decimal places. So, so now that those values are in place, what we can use is the, again, at, t at time t, we can use the smooth and the trend values at time t minus one to create our forecast. So we're not gonna have one here for a second value, but this forecast value is gonna be equal to our previously smooth value added our trend. And if I, there we go, can actually do that properly, that would help. And then we can take this forecast value and drag that on down into the final position here. And again, I'll format that as our calculation cell. And so now that we have this model built, we have our two input parameters, um, alpha and beta. And, and so if we felt like there was a pretty stable underlying model, we could go with a conservative alpha value. And then if we, we thought that we wanted to be highly responsive to trends in the model, we could increase our beta or, or vice versa. So it depends on what the data in your data set looks like. That'll help you determine, again, how responsive you want each of these uh, parameters to be. So should we expect uh, volatility in the underlying uh, data set itself? Like what's the base model? And then do we want to be highly responsive to trends that might occur in the model as well. And if we take a quick look at our accuracy measures here, we can see that by adding in the, the trend parameter, on the face of it, we seem to have Im improved this model over the, the previous one that we had with our exponential smoothing only. So our RMSE has decreased and our, our mean absolute deviation has also decreased. What we can do again now is get a visualization of, of this so that we can maybe better understand it um, through a chart versus just looking at the numbers themselves. So let's just select everything that's here. Oops, no, everything through the forecast. And we've got T included, which isn't really important, but we can remove that after the fact. 
So let's insert a chart really quickly. And again, you'll see it's it's kind of skewed here simply because we have the inclusion of, of the trend, which we don't really care about. So we can go to select data and we can remove that series. And now we can have a better look at, at what's going on. So here in the underlying data, in our chart, we can see what's happening. So again, blue is our recorded observation values. And then we've got our Holtz method values, our, our smooth exponential smooth values, and then our forecast uh, values here in yellow. So we can see here that the model now has been updated to more kind of accurately reflect the trends. And we can adjust these input parameters, keeping an eye on maybe an accuracy measure here like mean, um, mean absolute deviation. And we can see what happens if we decrease or increase this beta value. So decreasing beta, right, we're less responsive to trends. So we can see here the effect that it has. And if we were to increase this, right, there's a, a high, highly responsive to trends. So you, again, you want to balance this because you don't want to be overly sensitive to trends where you may overshoot by a, a large margin um, in some cases. But you also don't want to, you know, basically going with a beta of zero effectively leaves us with our, our previous exponential only smoothing model. So with a beta of zero, we're basically dealing with the exact same scenario that we had with exponential smoothing only. And now we just have the ability to increase um, again with our trends. So we might even go back and revisit alpha now that we can account for trends and perhaps a more conservative um, alpha would work well if we want to be more highly responsive via our trends. And so you can, you can now mess around with these parameters and see what the effect is, not only on the accuracy measures, but also on the appeal or the look of, of the actual charted data. So we can see here, it's, it's much smoother over time with a lower alpha and a marginally lower uh, trend uh, estimation. But you know, we can increase this as well to be more sensitive and see what that looks like. And, and so moving forward, again, this just gives us another tool in our, our toolkit that we could use to start exploring these models in this case where there's a trend that exists. Let's just go back here. Um, and again, you, let's take this chart now. We can compare it with the other one. So I'm going to cut this chart from here again and go to my charts sheet and we can paste it in here. And, and so now we can kind of see these two side by side. So here are exponential smoothing only. And then now that we've included the trend, we can see how these two charts compare. And again, this, this might be too dramatic. So, I mean, a forecast value is this far into the future. This might seem unreasonable, but it may be reasonable. Again, we want to have uh, a look back at how our forecast values are going to be comparing over time. And so we now have those two parameters that we can use to adjust until we get um, to a situation that we're happy with uh, moving forward. One final interesting note that we can, we can make about um, the Holtz method is that now that we have a trend value, uh, and if, if we were feeling pretty confident in the smooth and trend values at this point in time moving forward, we can make projections further into the future than just a, a single period. Because effectively, we would, we would be taking the smooth value and then multiplying the trend into the future to get new, new values. So we could extend this down, for example, to a couple of additional periods. And, and here, where we're basically just adding the previous smooth and trend value together, we could stretch this um, into the next space. And this would basically be these two same values we can absolute reference them. Multiplied by how many steps into the future we're moving. So this would be the second uh, step. And then we could take this and we could drag it further. 
So this would be multiplied by three. And so we have the ability with the Holtz method to not only forecast a single period into the future, but n number of periods, assuming that we're, we're kind of happy with these two values. So you could do a three or four or five month projection. I would hesitate in this particular case with home sale values to go further than that maybe, but it is something that's uh, an option that's available for us. And then we can come back and see what those projected uh, futures uh, would be. We have to increase the chart area here. Let's just make that change. My machine's getting a bit slow. So let's go and select our data. And then here we can extend this a little bit. So instead of 30, we would go to 32. Oh, I think I've messed this up. Let's cancel. Anyway, without, with, without spending too much time here, the point is, of course, updating your data in the chart to reflect the future forecast values you have here. You can get another visual to see those values um, going forward. So that's all I wanted to share about forecasting with Excel. I hope you found the series to this point uh, interesting, if nothing else. And in the next uh, couple of videos in this series, we'll take a look at how we can do uh, similar forecast values into the future using the orange data mining software tool.